So I wanted to talk about some practical weight loss stuff today. One of the recurring themes that comes up a lot is, uh, you know, what do I do? What kind of what are the next steps? And I think uh, one of the recent videos I talked about is, is a really good starting point. Um, we know if you look at the weight of these different interventions that can help you kind of jumpstart your weight loss, the most important one is how you change your diet. So your diet and your formulation of your diet and the consistency of your diet is far and away more important, more important than your exercise, your physical activity, your movement, uh, more important than any other factor. All those other things add up, sleep, your emotional well-being, all of that does, but your diet is far and away the most important. So really focusing on that, if you're, if you're sort of getting motivated and trying again to lose weight, reeling that in, really focusing on the, the, the thing that I, I think is very consistent in the scientific literature, um, minimizing or eliminating those processed calories in your food, those foods that come from, you know, uh, pre-made instant meals, additives, you know, additives, preservatives, um, humectants, all of those things that are, are put into food in a lot of the, the modern day foods, trying to get those out of our diet because those foods we know when you compare them to just balanced whole foods, you know, like chicken breast, rice, salad, greens, fruit, all of those things, when they compare them and go head to head, the whole foods far and away outperform them in terms of weight loss results. That people, when they eat non-processed, minimally processed whole foods, that they, they're they able to regulate their weights and their food intake much better and, and often with very little um, struggle and not, they're not having to put a lot of thought into it. They, they kind of self-regulate. And so I would say if you're someone who is at a stage where you're trying to figure out troubleshoot what am I supposed to do or trying to gear up again in an effort to lose weight that I would focus on really getting your diet squared away. And then when you have that focus on all these other contributors that we call sort of weight modifiers like stress, sleep, you know, it's hard to tackle everything at once. I would take, I would take it in parts. And if you can work with someone who can help you identify those areas, that's key as well. But I think diet, 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 diet has to be key. What you're eating is the most important contributor to the weight management aspect of your plan. Combining um, weight loss medication, are there benefits, downsides? With more medication becomes more, there's more risk of side effects. Uh, can you potentially lose more weight by having uh, combining medicines that can work synergistically or have unique mechanisms of, of action, yes. So, I mean, it's always weighing the risk and benefits. Like, I, you'll hear me sort of play out this worn old adage, uh, risk and benefit. At the end of the day, if you're someone who needs to lose a significant amount of weight to improve your health, then maybe using multiple might be helpful or considering something like surgery might be helpful depending upon what your level of risk is. One, there is just an awareness and a mindfulness of our biology. So our biology, what we inherited from our ancestors who were hunters and gatherers, who foraged for foods, who underwent uh, routine famines thousands of years ago, they evolved biological systems that motivated them and rewarded them for eating high calorie foods, energy dense foods, right? And so we developed this brain system that will prime you, motivate you, encourage you subconsciously to eat foods that are typically high in calories. Not always good for you, but we created these literally systems in our brain to do that. So you have to be aware that our biological predisposition is to consume and not just consume, but consume probably the most problematic types of foods. Um, you can see how f fast forward thousands of years where food is no longer scarce, how that can be a problem. And, it, and it's certainly manifesting now. Knowing that, being aware of that fact that we have a tendency to do that can be, can be enlightening and can be very helpful. And that, and that can often um, allow you to have greater insight into the way that your brain interacts with food. I talk a lot about uh, the quality of foods as being the most important factor, and it 100% is. If you saw my, I post a video today about people often talk about sort of the calorie model. It's often given and proposed as sort of the way in which you treat and manage your weight, which I think is missing the mark completely. 
Uh, yes, is it true that in order to lose weight, you have to be in a calorie deficit? But th that, that's great. That, that talks about sort of the constraints by which people can lose or gain weight. But it tells you nothing about how you're going to go about doing it, how that process may change dynamically. It's not very helpful. And so when we talk about focusing, we want to focus on the ultimate causes, right? The ultimate causes that, that are driving the energy imbalance. We don't want to focus on the proximate cause, right? Which is the calorie imbalance. We want to focus on what is causing the calorie imbalance, the root causes, right? I think that's, that's very intuitive. So I don't care that you're not in a calorie deficit or you're in a calorie surplus. That doesn't mean much to me, right? What I want to focus is on is there emotional eating? Are you not sleeping enough? Do you have a hormonal imbalance? Are you on medications that are causing you to gain weight? What are these root causes that we need to uh, unpack? That's going to be much more insightful and helpful. Do we need to help you structure your diet differently? Work with you on modifying things, making small changes. Do you need to be drinking more water? These are all the things that we really need to get at. These are the root causes. These are That's the best approach. Focusing on just trying to achieve a calorie deficit, it's not very helpful. And frankly, we have hundreds of years worth of data on how a calorie deficit does not lead to long-term meaningful weight loss. Because the process, it'd be great if our bodies never changed and adapted, but the processes that drive these calorie changes are dynamic. So when you are selecting a deficit um, or you're coming up with a calorie goal, that, that, that's a moving target. And so it's not very helpful to focus on something that one is a moving target and dynamic because the inputs and outputs change dramatically over time. And two, it's not helpful because we know that people aren't very good at measuring their calories. They're not very good at understanding how many calories they burn. They're not very good at understanding how many calories they take in because it's very hard. Serving sizes make it hard. Food composition makes it hard. Okay, it's how many grams of fat, carbs, and protein. Okay, uh, this chicken breast may be a little more grams of protein than the last one. This one may have more fat than the other one. I left the skin on it. Oh, that's more fat. Fat has more calories. And so if you've ever done calorie tracking, you understand how cumbersome and arduous it is, how easy it is to get behind and to stay up on top of it. And so when people say just being a calorie deficit, it's not helpful. It's not useful advice. It's played out advice and it's it's not really helping anyone. We need to focus on the things that matter. Focus on the quality of foods. Focus on those ultimate drivers that are contributing and 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 making it difficult for you. And if it, and if there's a significant biological component, then we need to focus on that. If there's a if if you are someone who needs to have biological treatment, right? We talk about these physiologic treatments. Then you need to probably have medication or surgery as a tool to help you lose weight, because otherwise it's going to be very difficult for you to lose weight. Keto can work if it works for you. If if uh, eating a restricted carbohydrate diet is sustainable for you, then keto can work very well. Nothing inherently wrong with keto as long as someone's able to monitor your cholesterol and your lipid profile, which is our biggest concern with keto because sometimes people can, inc when they increase their fat because keto, you got to eat calories from somewhere, usually it comes from increased fat. Um, sometimes that can mess up people's cholesterol. So we just got to make sure we're monitoring that. Oftentimes the drug side effects, you will build up a tolerance to them. So yes, sometimes it takes time. Sometimes it means you need to be on a lower dose for a longer period of time uh, than what is typically done. Um, I think if I remember correctly, you're on a GLP-1 last time we talked. So yeah, it just takes time. Um, sometimes if it's bad enough, uh, we even give like short-term medication to help with like the nausea. That Losing weight gets harder as you get older, no doubt. We know your metabolism slows as uh, your hormones change, which means uh, your body more easily gains fat and more easily loses muscle. And your muscle mass is what helps set your metabolic rate. So as you lose more muscle and bone, your metabolism slows down. Um, there are ways in which you can slow the loss of those things, especially if you're doing resistance training, um, even cardio can help preserve lean body mass and help preserve your metabolic rate. So that can help. That can help. It's not a, an ultimate solution, but it can help. 
Um, but yeah, aging makes it tough, man. It just makes it so much easier to gain weight as you get older. I don't have to tell you guys all, you know, many of you know that from experience, um, but it definitely does. Uh, does that mean you can't lose weight? No, you definitely still can. And, uh, you know, I still focus kind of going back to the theme. Um, if you if you have to start somewhere, if you're looking at where you kind of develop a foundation to start now and you're looking at starting that process, focus on diet first. Then focus on these other aspects. What's my sleep doing? We know people that get inadequate sleep, that they often have more difficult time managing weight and their weights are typically higher. People that aren't managing their stress, we know that stress hormones, cortisol, also can cause weight gain. People that are being inactive are not helping themselves, certainly, in being healthier and manage their, managing their weight and weight-related issues. Um, so, you know, focus on those other aspects. Afterwards, I would focus on centering yourself in one thing first, oftentimes just making small changes, right? So I have a number of patients that have lost 20, 30 pounds. They've made one or two changes. That's it. Haven't dramatically changed the way they eat. They've cut out sugar. They've cut out, you know, soft drinks, right? They were able to make one change, which was a meaningful change in and of itself, obviously. I mean, they lost 20, 30 pounds. You can't deny that. But they didn't have to make much. And I think we get into this mindset where we have to go from zero to 60, right? It's that human nature component where we feel like we have to just change our lives overnight. And I, I constantly tell people, and I, I talked about this in a video I made in, in sort of the last month about having patience. Right? You don't you don't get to the point where you're at right now overnight. You can't expect yourself to fix it overnight either. So start focusing on building a foundation for a sustainability, longevity approach, which oftentimes means small but meaningful changes. Cutting out soft drinks, that's a small meaningful change. Cutting out juices. Don't drink any of your calories in the, don't drink any of your calories, period. Most uh, liquid calories are wasted calories. I will tell you that. The vast majority, juice, milk, it's all wasted. Uh, most of the health benefits that are purported from juices and, and milks come from the food industry. It's a marketing tactic. It's not based in science. Um, our bodies inherently respond to whole foods uh, better than they do liquid calories. And liquid calories are much easier to overconsume. You doubt me about that? Think about the difference between five oranges in the form of orange juice and then five whole oranges. Which one will be easier to consume? Which one will you have a harder time finishing? I can promise you, you're going to have a harder time eating five whole oranges versus the orange juice equivalent of five oranges. You're going to get the same amount of calories in both. One of them, you may, one approach you may not even be able to finish or get even halfway done. 